Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. My name is David Adib, and I'm here from Kemet in Florida in the United States. And um, I do want to thank you for joining us in this webinar. And our topic for today would be designing in passives for uninterruptible power supplies. And uh, I will let our, ho our presenter to introduce himself, but his name is Atilio Zuccaro and he joins us from Europe. Uh, with that said, I will turn it over to Atilio and Atilio, you can take it from here. You can introduce yourself to our audience and then go ahead and start your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, okay, hello everybody. My name is uh, Atilio Zucaro and um, I am the FIE in Kemet for Italy, Israel, and Turkey. Uh, welcome to our new webinar. Today's topic will be uh, designing in passives for uninterruptible power supplies. Okay, so we, we talked about UPS. Okay, what is an UPS? Uh, UPS, uh, that is the acronym for an interruptible power supply, is an electrical device that provides emergency power to a load when the input power source fails. Uh, one of the biggest characteristic, uh, characteristics of a UPS is that uh, it must provide near instantaneous protection from input power interruptions. And uh, usually um, a device like this is, uh, is used to protect all those electrical, all uh, that electrical equipment uh, where an unexpected power failure could cause injuries, fatalities, business disruptions, or data loss. Uh, another typical task of a, UPS, of a UPS is to provide the loads with a clean power supply. Um, as you can imagine, there should be a place where energy uh, is stored. And in this case, we are talking about batteries. Uh, UPS is a big word. Uh, with, there are different types of architectures, but also sizes. Uh, let's, uh, for example, uh, think about the small UPSs that you can find uh, in your offices or big uh, UPSs that uh, um, could be found in, uh, in data center, for example. So uh, the range could go from hundreds of watt to megawatt. Uh, there is, of course, a, a standard that is the IEC 620403 standard that specifies all the performances and test requirements that these applications must uh, comply with. Um, we can see uh, on the market different types of uh, UPSs. First of all, we can divide we, we can divide them in two big classes: single phase or three phase. Single phase, of course, is the most economical option for smaller applications with low kilowatt. So we are talking about below 20 kilowatt in in general, or even more, or even less. Uh, another big class is three phase UPSs, and this is uh, generally the pre the preferred choice for high uh, kilowatt applications. Another big trend that we see in the, in the last years is the modularity of uh, these uh, um, of these devices. Uh, in fact, uh, modularity in UPSs gives a lot of advantages. The first one could be redundancy and consequently a bigger reliability. In fact, a, um, a customer or an end user can decide to put an extra module that can be uh, activated in case of a failure of one of the other modules. This gives uh, the, um, a bigger availability of the UPS itself. Uh, another um, important advantage is a better life, uh, battery life management. Uh, as you probably know, uh, the life of a battery is strongly dependent on the number of times the battery is charged and discharged. So uh, having uh, extra modules could uh, uh, give a better management of these processes. Another function is uh, the op swapping functionality. It means that uh, we can just swap one module uh, without turning off the UPS, where, so without any risk for the final load. And finally, uh, another big advantage, and in my opinion, this is the biggest one, it's the scalability. As you can see here uh, in the image on the right of the, of the screen, we just 
uh, got a 45 kilowatt UPS, putting three 15 kilowatt UPSs in, um, in parallel. Uh, a final customer or end user can decide one day just to improve the power of the, uh, of the UPS, just adding, for example, another 15 kilowatt module in order to get a 60 kilowatt. Or on the contrary, it just can remove one of the models if the power need is, uh, uh, is decreasing. There are, of course, hundreds of uh, different architectures on the market. Uh, however, uh, we can say that three of them are the most common. The first one is the offline topology. Uh, it gives the basic protections and uh, it's also the cheapest, the cheapest solution. The load is powered directly by the input power and the backup power circuitry is solely invoked when utility power fails. Here on the right, you can see a scheme of functioning of the offline type. Uh, as you can see, during normal oper operation, the position, the position of this switch is up. So it means that during normal operation, power comes from main. So the UPS is not invoked at all. It just, uh, it's just attached to mains in order to recharge the battery. If there is a failure in, uh, in mains, uh, we can see that this switch goes down and only in this case, the um, power comes from the inverter and from the battery. The second type of architecture is the line interactive. This is the most common solution between uh, 0 0.5 and 5 kilowatt. It's really similar to the offline topology, but this technology inco also incorporates additional circuitry to tolerate over voltages and under voltages. So one of the extra characteristics of this uh, kind of architecture is that the load is in some way, in, it's in some way protected uh, from uh, over voltages and under voltages of the, of the input power. Finally, we have the online topology that is the most common UPS uh, architecture above 10 kilowatt. The load is always powered directly by the inverter. So it receives processed power all the time the UPS is operational. Uh, this can be considered the most robust and most expensive solution. But uh, as I told you here, it's the most common solution for big, uh, for big um, power requests. As you can see here in the image on the, on the right of the, of the screen, uh, during normal operation in this time, uh, differently from what happens in offline type, the switch is down. So also during normal operation, power comes from the inverter. During a main failure, the switch stays down the same. And even in this case, power comes from the inverter. Uh, I will focus in the next slides on this kind of uh, architecture because it's the most interesting uh, one for um, for us and for designers in general. And I will show you more in detail what are different kinds of operational modes we, we can have. Okay, so this is the scheme of an online topology uh, or also called double conversion UPS. Double conversion because here you can see there are two different stages of, of conversion. The first one is an AC DC converter stage. Then we have a DC link, a DC DC converter stage, and the battery. After that, we also have a DC AC converter stage. Uh, and finally, we have the final load. If we go more into details into this, uh, this scheme, we can see that in the first part, so it's uh, in the AC DC converter uh, stage that also uh, works as a power factor, uh, as a PFC, uh, we can find uh, an EMI filter an AC filtering, and finally, a rectifier. After that, we have the DC link, the DC-DC converter, and the battery. The task of the DC-DC converter is to adapt the power level, the voltage level of the battery, to the voltage level of the uh, DC here in this part of UPS. Another important task is to allow batteries to supply power when input AC voltage is down, so this direction and to uh, charge the battery when the input AC is up, so in this direction. 
After that, we have the DC-AC converter stage that is made up of an inverter, again, an AC filtering stage, and again, an EMI filtering stage. At the end of the UPS, we have static switches. Uh, if uh, in, we focus on this one here in the image, this is normally on because as I told you before, uh, during normal operation, uh, power comes from the inverter. But it could happen sometimes that UP, the UPS can be totally bypassed. In this case, this one goes off, this one goes on, and the load is connectly, in this case, directly uh, to mains. So let's go more into detail in all the working modes we can have here. Okay, we have, first of all, the normal mode. That is the mode uh, that we have when, uh, power, when mains is, uh, is up and power comes up from, uh, from uh, normal uh, uh, utility. In this case, uh, we have that uh, power comes from here, so from the input. On one side, it goes to the battery in order to recharge it. On the other side, it goes to the inverter. Finally, AC filtering, EMI filtering, and finally, the final load. During the battery mode, and this mode is invoked uh, as soon as we have a failure on the mains or we have a loss of uh, power from here. Power is taken from battery and it does this path. So this is converter, this is a converter load. Finally, the third mode is this one, that it's the UPS bypass mode. In this case, all the UPS is bypassed and power is taken from mains. Uh, this mode could be used in case of UPS failure, or, but also in case, let's say, there is a maintenance of the UPS itself. Anyway, it could be useful in different uh, situations. Okay, so let's see what we can offer as Kemet uh, into the scheme. Uh, we have two EMI filters. So if we talk about EMI filters, we are uh, speaking about chokes, but also X and Y caps. Then we have two, at least two AC filtering stages, one here and one here. And uh, for this kind of circuits, as Kemet, we can provide different solution. Uh, first one is for PCB mounting, T4 LF series. The other one is for big uh, power uh, application that it's Q mounting. And in this case is the C44PR series. The ceiling, even here, different technologies we can provide aluminum electrolytics as napkins, screw terminals, but also uh, film capacitors, so C4AQ, but even ceramic SMD DC links. The, uh, this is converter, so power inverters. We have just launched uh, last year a new series that is called MTX. That I will show you more in details in the next slides. After that, you can see that we have an inverter, but also uh, switches, high power switches. So numbers could be needed. And even here, we can provide different technologies, for example, clay film, plastic film, but also uh, ceramic capacitors, different styles of mounting. So here we have uh, uh, mounting with lugs uh, or with leads or SMD mounting. Finally, uh, we also have, uh, let's say, peripheral uh, circuitry. And uh, so we can offer as Kemet other kind of uh, components as current sensors or low voltage capacitors. I will go more into details uh, in the next slides um, and then we speak about all these parts of the circuits. Okay, here we have uh, an EMI filtering stages, stage. As I told you before, we have at least two stages, one at the input and one at the output of the UPS. Uh, it's not always like that because in some cases, there could be also extra EMI filtering stages. For example, in, in case of modular UPSs, it's common to find another stage on the chassis of the UPS. So uh, on the higher level of it. Uh, here you have um, a common scheme. Uh, in an EMI filter, X and Y caps are used, but also AC chokes uh, are used. Uh, X caps are commonly uh, put between uh, line and neutral line. Uh, white caps are commonly uh, used between the two, uh, the two lines and ground. 
uh, a sea choke instead is connected uh, like this and um, usually is used to filter uh, common mode noise but also of course differential and dual uh, mode chokes are, uh, are available. If we uh, see what we can offer as Kemet to support uh, customers and designers in general for uh, EMI suppression capacitors, uh, we have different series. Uh, really, uh, I can say that uh, we have a lot of them. Uh, here, I uh, just put uh, the most uh, interesting ones. I divided uh, them in two big uh, groups. The first one, uh, I, uh, the first group, I called it standard uh, capacitors. The, the second one, I called it dumpy. For standard, standard capacitor, I meant uh, the best commercial solution we can offer in terms of price, but uh, also size. For example, as X2 cap, we have our, our R46 series and our R46 uh, miniaturized series. As X1, we have our R47 series. As Y2, we have our R41 series. Uh, as I told you, this is the best uh, commercial uh, solution we can offer in terms of price. So if you if the customer doesn't have any particular need, uh, this is the best uh, the best series to uh, look at. Uh, apart from that, uh, for those applications that uh, are critical in terms of harsh environment of, uh, or um, humidity, we can offer also extra series that here are called dump it, that are commonly called dump it or uh, heavy duty series. Uh, as you probably know, uh, humidity is a big enemy for uh, film capacitors. Um, so if a capacitor is exposed to high temperature but also high uh, humidity levels, um, the, capacity, the capacitor can be affected with time. We, uh, it can face a degradation in terms of metallization. This degradation can bring to capacitance uh, decrease with time and also uh, an increase in the serious resistance of the capacitor. If this phenomena uh, go on with time, we, uh, the capacitor not only uh, works uh, not, so, not so well anymore, but it can also fail. A fa as you can imagine, a failure uh, in an X or Y cap can be catastrophic because, uh, first of all, the final application won't, won't work anymore. But apart from that, we can have fire. Uh, but we can also have uh, uh, the possibility to have uh, um, an electrical shock to the final customer. So it's important that this type of capacitors must be robust. robust. So for dump it, we have as X2 series our F862, X2 F863, and Y2 r 41 t I will uh, um, explain them in a better way in these slides. Uh, as X2 cap, uh, the, let's say the, the best solutions in terms of the best solution in terms of the reliability we can offer is the A562 with CSPAC V054. This is an X2 cap, 310 volt AC rated voltage, up to 110. Uh, degree Celsius. The THB test that this capacitor can withstand is an 85 degrees, 85 percent of relative humidity, 1,000 hour. THB test stands for temperature, humidity, and bias test. It's a test that is specified in an, an uh, IEC standard, and uh, the 85, 85, 1,000 hour is the maximum that we can have at the moment uh, on the market. F863, it's always an X2 uh, capacitor, always 310 volt AC and up to 110 degrees Celsius. In this case, the THP test is slightly, is slightly lower than uh, the F862. In fact, in this case, we have 85, 85, 500 hours, not 1000 hours. Going to our R41 T series, this is a new series we launched uh, some months ago. It's a Y2X1 cap. 
uh, as you can see here, the most uh, interesting uh, characteristics here are the THP test 85, 85, 1000 hours, so the maximum uh, there, there can be on the market. But this capacitor is also rated at 125 degrees, so it's specific also for high temperature applications. Apart from that, we also specify on the sheet an echo test of four of 4,000 volt that could be useful in some kind of application, but for example, automotive. Uh, the last series I want to highlight here is the R40, R52P series. That it's a new series that we are launching in July 2020. Uh, even this one is an X2 series that it's 85, 85, five, uh, 500 hours. But the big characteristic of this one is that it's a miniaturized capacitors and uh, this will be the smallest capacitors on the market, the smaller, the smaller capacitor on the market with this kind of characteristics. As I told you, we are just launching it, and so you will find it uh, in our website just in some weeks. Common mode shock. Uh, as you may know, uh, as Kemet, we are not uh, only a capacitor company anymore, but we just acquired, um, we, we, uh, we also acquired a um, token token company, so we are uh, also, we have a division that is called MSA that stands for Magnetic Sensor and Actuators. So we also have magnetics in our catalog at the moment. For what concerns chokes, we have different series that you can see here. So we go from really small series with really small uh, current, so 0.1 amp, to big toroidal choke up to uh, 40 amp. Uh, we have two phase uh, chokes, 250, 500 volt AC, but also three and four phases. Uh, as shapes, as you can see here, we have a really uh, a big variety of uh, different shapes. As materials um, of the core, uh, basically we have ferrite material, materials as manganese zinc and nickel zinc materials, but also nanocrystalline materials for uh, high performance applications. Apart from um, what we have on the catalog, so uh, all this series you can see here. We also have uh, uh, the possibility to uh, build custom shapes in, in, uh, in case of request. Going to the AC filtering stages, uh, to the two filtering uh, AC filtering stages, uh, we have one of the input and one, another one on the output of the UPS. I divided them into, let's say, two classes, low power and high power. For low power UPS, the best solution is the PCB mounting thin box. Our series is the C4AFT series. Uh, so this is our uh, specific series for uh, AC filtering uh, tasks. Um, rated voltage goes from 250 uh, volt up to 500 volt capacitance, uh, rate capacitance range is from 1 micro to 62 microfarad. Even here, you can see that this kind of capacitor is characterized in humidity. So even here, we have uh, that uh, this capacitor can withstand an 85, 85% of relative humidity, 1,000 hour test. Apart from that, another important feature is that uh, this series is uh, SE cool 225. So, this gives an extra level of reliability, even in other kind of applications as the industrial ones. High power, uh, as I told you before, the preferred solution here is the screw mounting. Uh, here as Kemet, we have a new series that is called C44PR series. Um, as you can see here, record voltage goes uh, from 330 volt RMS up to 1000 volt RMS, but of request, we have the possibility to also to build capacitors above 100, 1000 volt, uh, 1000 volt RMS. Sorry, uh, as capacitance range, we go from 15 microfarad to 600 uh, microfarad. Of course, one of the focus segment for this kind of uh, for this product is uh, UPS, but also solar converters and spin mills. Okay, let's start talking about DC-Link. Uh, 
preferred choice for uh, DC links uh, in uh, UPS applications is uh, aluminum electrolytics uh, technology. Uh, in fact, usually the voltage level is not so high. So it's, uh, this technology normally is, uh, is the most common and most used uh, for this. Uh, as Kemet, we have really uh, even here big numbers, uh, big number of series on our catalog. Um, for example, we have legacy series as the, the ALC10 and ALC40 series. Uh, but here I just would like to um, highlight uh, uh, IC, ICD capacitor series or also called um, high volumetric efficiency series. What are the advantages of having a high volumetric uh, efficient capacitor in, uh, in your design? Uh, the big advantage is that uh, we can offer high, higher capacitance in the same case size or vice versa, the same capacitance in a smaller size. So um, uh, the big advantages, if we do this, uh, are space saving and cost saving. Of course, if you put less capacitors or if you uh, occupy less volume, volume in your application, it will save space, of course, but also uh, money. ASC uh, 70 uh, is uh, an 85 rated temperature uh, capacitors with 18,000 hours uh, of expected life at 85 degrees, and it's up to 600 volt rated voltage. ALC 80, it's uh, 105 degrees rated temperature capacitors with 9 thousand hours of expected life at 105 degrees. ASC80 is up to 500 volt. Of course, these two series is more price com are most uh, are more more price competitive compared to legacy series as ALC10 and ALC40. High power DC link. Uh, of course, snap pins are mounted on the PCB. For high power uh, UPS, the most common solution is uh, the solution. The most common solution is uh, the use of uh, screw terminals. Uh, even here, we have a lot of series in our catalog, but even here we have uh, high CV series or high uh, volume efficiency uh, series. Even here, they can offer higher capacitance in the same case size or vice versa, the same capacitance in a smaller size. And even, and even here, the advantages are space saving and cost saving. ALS 70 and 71 are rated at 85 de uh, degrees Celsius with 20,000 hours of expected life and uh, goes, uh, this series go up to uh, 550 volt rated voltage. ALS 80 and 81 uh, are rated at 105 degrees Celsius with uh, 9,000 hours of expected life and uh, rated voltage up to 500 volts. Of course, even the series are mm, press competitive compared to legacy series as ALS 30 and ALS, ALS 40. This slide here is just to uh, remind you that uh, we have a left calculator for lytics on our website. So um, once you choose your part number, uh, you, don't, you don't need to ask uh, FIEs uh, or PMs or uh, your VC. You, you, just, you just can go on our website, uh, put the part number, put here your mission profile, and in a really uh, simple way, you will have the expected life of the capacitor in your application. Uh, as I told you before, uh, in UPS, the ceiling voltage is, is usually below uh, 500 volt, so uh, lithics are commonly used. However, lithics, as you probably know, can withstand less ripple current than thin capacitors. Besides, big lithics capacitors don't work well with high frequency ripple current harmonics. So in some cases, other technologies as film and ceramic capacitors can be used as the ceiling or uh, in parallel to the to the lithics. 
here uh, quickly i just highlighted highlighted some series it's the c441 uh, c44um series uh, that uh, it's for um i i power application so even here we have a screw mounting c4aq that is a dc link in box for pcb mounting and finally uh, we have our tc link that is a uh, dc link uh, ceramic capacitor with smd mounting okay let's go to the dcc converter uh, here a scanet we just launched uh, a new series that is called the metcom mpx uh, series uh, mpx power inductors are metal composite inductors ideal for using switch mode power supply um, they uh, have high saturation characteristics that are ideal for the signs requiring stable inductance across temperature and current. The construction is shielded and uh, it's, uh, the mounting is SMB. Inductance goes from uh, 0 0.1 to 100 microharry. Operating temperature goes up to 155 uh, degrees Celsius. Here is what we can offer on our catalog. We have different sizes with, uh, uh, that uh, go from uh, 5 times 5 millimeters up to 22 times 22 millimeters as footprint. Um, we have the industrial or commercial version that is the MPX, but we also launched a new series that is called MPXD that is AC221, so, so specific for automotive uh, applications. Numbers. If you remember the online topology scheme in the in the first slides, uh, we have an inverter for DCAC conversion. So the, we can have high power switching circuits. So number could be needed. Uh, besides, we also have several switches, as for example the static switches, uh, but also we can also have switches on the battery. Uh, in this case, we have. I uh, divide the key and peak current when switching on and off the, the, the switches we have. So even in this case, numbers could be needed. Uh, as Kemet, we can really provide different solutions. I may say that we have the wider portfolio in the market. Uh, so different technologies, different mounting styles. Uh, for example, uh, film box, we can, uh, we can support the customer with film box with lugs for that mounting on the power modules. Uh, and this is, um, we are talking about our C4BS series. Uh, this is, let's say, for big uh, uh, power uh, UPSs. Uh, we also have field box uh, uh, radar for PCB mounting. We have the C4AS series, but also R73, 74, 75, 76. And uh, in the last month, we also launched, we also launched two, two new series. The R75, 125 degrees, and the R76, 125 degrees Celsius. Finally, another option that uh, the designer can have, uh, it's the use of MLCC uh, as uh, snappers in, uh, in their circuits. Uh, so what we can offer as Kemet is we have uh, in our portfolio C0G and X7R MLCCs with big sizes and high, volt, uh, high rate voltages. Uh, in this case, usually a big number of them are used in parallel, up in parallel for this kind of application. But we also have our KC link that it's not only uh, a DC link, but can be used also in resonant application and number applications. And in our catalog, we also have a series that is called Arc Shield. It's uh, an XMNR uh, series that is protected against electrical parts. Finally, something that you don't have to forget, uh, in UPS, for, of course, it's, it's fundamental to have control of the current at different stages. Uh, and usually, so several current sensors are used as Kemet. Uh, we have different series in portfolio to support uh, the designers. Uh, besides, there is always what I uh, showed you before, let's say it's the power scheme of the UPS. Uh, in parallel, there should be, for, of course, some logic in order to control the device, to provide the user interface. Uh, for this task, usually micros and DSPs are used. 
so we are talking about low uh, power, low voltage level uh, uh, circuit. Uh, so low power capacitors for voltage regulation, the coupling uh, signal conditioning are used. In this case, as Kemet, we have different solutions as uh, ceramic capacitors, tantalum polymer capacitors, but also aluminum polymer capacitors. Okay, what are the key takeaways uh, of this webinar you can take with you? Uh, first of all, as I showed you in the first part, there are different types of uh, UPSs and different architecture. The online topology or also called uh, double conversion is the most common UPS uh, for high power uh, application. Uh, online topology UPS has big numbers of passive components inside. Kemet can support the designers in choosing the right part for both capacitors and magnetic. So capacitors, we are talking about EMI safety caps, AC filtering caps, DC links, numbers. Magnetics, uh, we are talking about AC chokes, power inductors, but also current sensors. Thank you very much for your attention. I think- All right, yeah. thank you. Thank you, Atilio. Um, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, we actually have not received any questions uh, regarding this topic. Well, uh, now, now that I say that, here's one question. Okay, so our first question, Atilio. What about supercapacitors technology? It has been considered by Kemet to use as energy backup source. Okay. Uh, so the problem of supercapacitor is that they uh, can provide um, energy really quickly. But uh, if we speak about the amount of energy they can store inside, uh, you can say that uh, in the UPS, battery is still the most common solution we can find uh, of the market. Okay. And we actually have another question that says, which switching frequencies do you see? Ah, uh, it, dep it depends. It's re it really depends on the on the size of the and the you know technology is used as power module for the UPS. Uh, usually, we can go from uh, uh, low switches switching frequency, let's say some uh, some kilohertz, uh, up to uh, ten. 10 or um, 10 kilohertz or something above uh, up to one, 100 kilohertz, but um, I, I haven't seen uh, frequency above this, if I have to be honest. Uh, it depends really on the size of the, of the UPS and the architecture, the, the designer uh, is, uh, is choosing. The, Okay, um, and these were the only two questions that we've received so far. If somebody else has a question, please go ahead and send it through. Um, and otherwise, we will conclude this webinar. And uh, I do want to thank you, Atilio, for your presentation. I do want to thank our attendees for attending our webinar. Uh, have a great day, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye.